What's up guys, I'm Cheddar. This will be the first video in a series of seven all about advanced movement. So today we're talking generics. So runes, managing levitation, stuff like that outside of classes in general. In each video in the future, I'll talk about movement for a specific class. Today, we're just talking generics. So I wanna keep this short, let's get right into it. All right, so the first tech is called dash hopping. It's very simple. So dash conserves your momentum when you're falling from height. So if you look at where I dash from normally, if I just dash forward, I go a little, I go a little ways, not super far, but if I start up here and drop down, I go almost twice as far. So all I'm doing is in that motion, right before I hit the ground, I hit my dash key and then hit, follow up with a space bar immediately afterward. So what that does is that keeps your momentum from falling and then prevents the friction on the ground from carrying you. So if you don't add the jump in the end, you still go pretty far, but not quite as far as you could if you went from height, dash, and then jumped afterward. All right, the next tech is called crouch dashing. So this doesn't actually change your movement at all, but it does affect your field of vision. If you just simply hold your crouch key Right as you dash, if you hold crouch, my FOV goes way back and I have a lot better vision of what's happening around me. So as I'm dashing into a fight or dashing out of a fight, I can see a lot more what's happening around me. So it definitely helps a lot when you're doing it. It's not necessary, but it definitely looks nice on the screen as well. The next tech is called a dash wiggle. It's very, very simple. So on PC, all you have to do is while you're in the dash, you kind of move your mouse a little bit. You can do this on controller as well. Um, I'm playing on PC, I'll explain everything in those terms. Um, so all this does is makes you a little harder to hit while someone's trying to track you. So while you're in the dash, you drop down, hold W, and move your mouse a little bit left and right as you're doing it. Very simple. So for this next tech, it's called ascending and descending dashes. So an ascending dash is just like we did a minute ago. So all it is, it's when you hit the ground with your dash, you hit your jump key and levitate a little bit and it carries you high into the air. So if I'm trying to push this person up here, if I dash into them and then ascend, I have height on top of them and they have a hard time tracking me in the air around their body. Second part of this tech is descending dashes. So what this does, it allows you to kind of get around corners and down steps a lot faster. So if I just dash normally, it kind of carries me down the hill like it normally would. However, if you hold crouch the entire way down a hill, kind of like this, it carries you down the hill and you can kind of move around the hill with it. If I do this, it allows me to stay, have the wider field of view because I'm crouched and staying hugged to the ground allows me to move my dash in the air. The next tech is called an S dash. So this is very useful when you're fighting someone right in front of you. You ran out of mana, so if I threw my toss clouds, I'm now out of mana and I can't do anything for that like whatever second and a half period. If you're in that case and you have your rune cooldown up with your dash, you can do an S dash. So all you do is when you're in the air, you push S and then hit your dash key, and you'll dash backwards. So dash normally always activates in whatever direction you're looking, but if you do it while holding a different key, such as A or D, you'll move in the direction that your arrow keys told you to. If I'm fighting this person here, doing my thing, running a mana, oh shoot, I'm gonna S dash away from them, keep my distance while my mana recharges. Very, very useful for fighting. And this tech will be used in future videos I talk about with movement for other classes. This next tech is called C dashing. So this combines what we just learned from the S dashing with a move around the person. So if you still have mana, if I'm fighting this person here, if I do a C dash around them, I can slot them again from behind them. So all I'm doing here is I'm combining the dash wiggle where you move your mouse as you do it with pushing D on my keyboard as I dash. When I hold A on my keyboard, in order to track this person, I have to move my mouse to the right as well, keep them on my screen, both directions. With the C dash, this just happens very quickly. So as you do it, you counter strike your dash around them. 
and get a new angle on them that they're not expecting. So having that fresh perspective from them makes you harder to track and gives you more options to fight back. So this next tech involves the flight rune. It's called a pop flight. It's very simple. So when you're in the air with flight, you're pretty easy to track for a frostborn and a conduit because you're just in the air flying around. What you can do is you can just pop the flight, cancel the flight right away with your space bar, or just by hitting one of your spell keys, and then you can get a high angle shot on them. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna aim up in the air, hit my flight, hit space immediately afterward, and then you can use a frost sniper or a conduit and land a shot on them. So having that change in altitude very quickly allows for easier shots on your end because shooting down and spell break is quite easy compared to shooting up and it makes you harder to track in the air while you do it. For this next tech, I call it a teleport turn. So all that means is when I'm casting my teleport, I turn after I push the cast button. So you teleport to wherever you were initially pointed when you first cast the, the rune and there's a wind up period in which you can move your character around. So if I aim my teleport over there and then turn, I'm now facing back to where I came from, from the teleport. This is very, very useful, especially in the conduit class. So if someone is sitting right here, if I slot them with tox, teleport over here, turn around, and they, they don't know where I go, and I have a free line for a frost snipe. If I have a conduit especially, it's very, very useful to, to attack them from there. But this last tech, it's called chrono canceling. So this requires having the spell slinger talent on your build. So you already know you can store gauntlets in your inventory. You may not have known you can also store runes. When you're using chrono master, um, if you pop it over here and attack them, whatever, do your thing, when you come back from the Chrono Rune, if they saw where you started it in the first place, they'll just blow that place up. If they have a Tox or a Fire or an Ice, they'll freeze you, they'll hit you with the Dragon Fire, they'll do a lot of damage to where you were. However, if you use your Chrono and then swap runes before the timer runs out, you will not revert to where you came from. And now I have a dash which we already know from my previous comments on how to do dash mechanics, it's a very versatile rune in combat. So when you have your Chrono Master, it's very, very helpful to have Spell Slinger as well. If you transfer to a new rune before the timer runs out on your Chrono Master, you won't return. Your opponent think expecting you to return will be confused. You can attack them and you'll win the fight. All right, you guys, that'll be it for the generic video on how to manage your runes well and advanced movement tech on those. Later on this week, I'll be talking about how to do advanced movement for each class particularly. I'll go through everything that, look, that you need there. That'll be it. Hope you guys enjoyed it. If you liked it, leave a subscribe and click that like button down below. Have a good one. Peace out.